I'm sure you heard me. The reason I'm speaking to you, young people, so now I, I tell you my story. I was raised, I lived in a small town when I was born. It, in, in Europe, the borders changed a lot. When I was born, the town I lived in was Slovakia. When I went to school, it was Hungary. It was Czechoslovakia. When I went to school, it was Hungary, and now it's Slovakia. The, the town I lived in was very small. I had two younger sisters. One was 11, one was nine. We lived in a multi-dwelling multi -dwelling home house. I had an aunt, uncle, and a cousin. They lived in one apartment. We lived in another apartment, and I had a grandmother with a, an aunt who lived in a third apartment. Life was good. In this small town, there were about 1,100 people, and they were Catholics, Protestants, Jews, and gypsies living in this small town. I never, growing up, I never experienced any anti-Semitism. I had Jewish friends. I had friends of, in every faith. We played together. We went to school together. We were friends. We celebrated holidays. We respected each other's holidays. And, and life was really good. Until in 1939, we heard rumors. Now, the border, what I started to tell you, oh, that came a little later. Uh, in 30. Nine, we heard rumors that the Germans were taking people, Jewish people, into concentration camps in, from Poland, from Czechoslovakia. And my parents felt, oh, this probably, it will stop because people will not allow this to happen. One human being will not allow this to happen to another human being. And like in my hometown, we were all such close friends. My father's best friend was the chief of police who happened to be Catholic. The Catholic priest played tennis with the Jewish teacher. So I just want you to have a picture how things were going well. Now, around in 1943, the Germans already invaded Czechoslovakia, now we were Hungary, and the border was about a one-hour bus ride. My grandmother lived in a large city that called Bratislava, is the capital of Slovakia, and we lived in a small town called Shamorin. The border was between us it was, as I said, it was a, about a, approximately a one-hour bus ride, so it was like a half hour uh, where the border was. One, we heard now my grandmother from Slovakia, they were taking people to the concentration camp, and we got a letter, I remember, a postcard from my grandmother saying, do not worry about me, I am well, and I hope you are well, and when the war is over, we will see each other. You can imagine how happy we were with that postcard, but what really happened, by the time we received that postcard, my grandmother and the people from her city, the Jews, were taken to, a, they were killed in a gas chamber. But the Germans wanted to cover their track, and they randomly they asked people to send to next, next of kin a, a postcard. My mother never lived to find out what had happened to, to her mother, but I did. Now the first thing came when the, now the Germans and the early, very early part of 1944, the early spring, they invaded my city, and the first order were, you might have been familiar, you've seen a Jewish star, we had to go out of the house, 
We could not leave our house unless we wore a Jewish star. Now, in my hometown, as I told you, we all know who was so, we know each other's name. And the first time, and my parents always raised me to be very proud of who I am and respect everybody else. And I tell this to my children, and I'm telling this to you. So I wore that star with pride. When I came out, the first day when I walked out with the star on my coat or dress, whatever I wore, some of my Christian friends turned away from me. They didn't recognize me, but some of them were very nice. So I felt they don't want to bother with me. I will not bother with them. And things were happening very quickly at that point already. Then you can imagine, one day we had an order. They took, they confiscated our radios. We all had radios. We had to turn in our radios. Any possessions we had, it was a jewelry or, or, or a bicycle. I had a bicycle, I had a march. I had to take that to the center of town and I had to turn that in. But as long as we were with my, I was with my family, I was very happy. Uh, so this was in the early part of 1944. Then, right after Easter holiday, the Passover holiday, the orders came that we had to leave our home. So you just visualize if one day somebody would tell you that you have to leave your home and you can never come back again. How, how would that feel? And they told us that we could take some of our furniture and we were taken into a nearby a small town and they fought, and this was now they formed that the other people had moved out or they made room for us and this was a ghetto. You heard the name ghetto. And in this ghetto we were given an apartment. Again we had we had like a three room apartment and we I, we shared that every family they shared that with their family and I shared the one room my aunt and uncle lived, and we lived in one room, my grandmother another room. Now in this town, the, an order came that the young men who were army eligible age, they had to report to a special army. They were drafted, but not to a regular army because the Germans said that the Jews cannot be trusted to work in a, to be in a regular army, and they formed a working commando. And that's where my father was drafted. He was only 44 years old, and I never saw him after that. He left us. He had to be, he was drafted into this army. Things were happening in this ghetto where we lived. The parents set up like homeschooling, and they try to have for us children to have a fairly normal kind of a life. We <coughs> couldn't go to regular school. We stayed in this ghetto for about a month. And then, now again, the orders came that we were taken to a nearby city. All the Jewish people were gathered there. Here we know, and they, we were told everybody could pack like a suitcase, like an overnight case, with the things that you will need for a few days. And they kept telling us, we're going to take you to a settlement. You'll be very happy living there. Don't worry, we'll have everything for you. So you, you didn't have a choice at this point, so we followed orders. When we got into this big city, we no longer lived in an apartment but it was like a lumber yard, it was like a shelter. We lived on the, we slept on the floor, and they had like a, a food kitchen, and we all lived together. Again, not much longer than maybe a week, or, or maybe uh, at the get now, uh, this was now the deportation center. 
And then one day, they marched us, the Germans and other soldiers, they marched us to the center of, to the train station. They shoved us into these cattle cars. You might have seen pictures of it. And it was already the start of the summer. It was end of May. It was sometime end of May, early part of, early part of June.